right, Verizon just out with first quarter results. The company reporting an adjusted earnings per share of $1.20. That was in line with what the street was expecting. Revenue came in a little light at $32.9 billion. Street had been looking for $33.5 billion. Uh, the company pointing out that total broadband net additions for the first quarter, 437,000. That is its largest number in more than a decade. Joining us right now exclusively is Hans Vesberg. He is Verizon's chairman and CEO. And Hans, welcome. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hey, so how are we doing? I, when Good I was saying you. that uh, revenue was a little light, you looked like you took a little issue with that. Like, no, maybe, you know, maybe. No, I didn't. But you know, when it's a little bit light because we had less hardware sales. And, okay. Uh, hardware sales in Verizon is usually without any calories, meaning it doesn't go to the bottom line. It's basically devices. Hmm. So that doesn't really matter. I think that what's more important for us is the service revenue because that's what is really creating our margin and the flow through and the cash flow that we had the good cash flow we had in the quarter. Let's talk a little bit about what, what you are seeing, just in terms of uh, you know, the, the quick headlines on this are that the, the pandemic boom is kind of over, growth is slowing, Americans are getting a little more conscious about what they're doing, what they're spending on. And, and that's what we've heard echoed in a lot of different places recently. Is that the case, just in terms of people willing to upgrade phones, willing to spend on plans, or what do you see? No, I think we have been a little bit more cautious with promotions, and I think that is uh, coming through with less hardware sales. I think the upgrades is, of course, healthy that people want to take a new mobile phone, and that's continuing. So we see, uh, I would say we have seen a good momentum. The first quarter on the consumer side, we had the gross ads increasing with 11% year over year, coming from the momentum we had in the fourth quarter with the new offerings. We were a little bit soft last year, as you remember, in the second quarter and the third quarter. We have sort of sorted that out on the consumer wireless side. Then on the broadband, we're absolutely doing fantastic. I mean, 437,000 new broadband customers in a quarter. We haven't seen that for a decade. And that's both the Fios, the broadband, the fiber, and it's fixed wireless access at the same time. So really good. And all in all, that helped us with a very strong cash flow of $8.3 billion in the quarter, which was $1.5 billion better than we had in the first quarter last year. So a lot of things that we strategically have talked about is actually start happening. We have more to do, but clearly this was a step forward for us. We feel it's a solid quarter, and the team is doing great work. We had a great yield. <clears throat> we had a long discussion about AT&T. AT yep. Same problem. Same problem here. I mean, if you want to yield, what, what's your yield? Right now? It's high, so six, seven. So you can buy for, for, for the yield, but I don't know. I asked for a 10-year chart. I, I don't have the heart to bring it up, I don't think, uh, Hans. It was like 50 or 55 10 years ago, wasn't it? Uh, I think we were close to 50 for a while pre pandemic. Same, same issue right. with, yeah, with AT&T, but not T-Mobile, as you, as you well, so the, yeah, so what, I want to know how you think, I mean, if you look at what happened with T-Mobile, the mm. success of T-Mobile, and you look at where you are and you look at where AT&T is, just stack it up for us and explain your sort of take on it. I think I wouldn't compare us. We're very different from a... Uh, asset point of view. I mean, we just, it's just one year ago since we got our C band, the, the spectrum we bought for 52 billion. And as we point out in the report today, wherever we are deploying that right now, we're gaining new broadband customers, we're getting consumers taking on wireless plans, and we get more step ups. And we have only deployed 60 markets out of four, over 400. So for us, that's an important piece of, of, of our recipe right now that we're building on, on our C band. Uh, and we see good tra traction on that. So we, we feel good about that, and definitely we produce more cash flow and EBITDA than anybody else in the industry. This quarter, almost right. 12 billion again in EBITDA. So uh, ultimately, we think cash flow is important uh, and profitability. Uh, Hans, you have mentioned in the past, you just talked about it too, this, the promo, promotional incentives. You've talked about how that's, that's just not something that's sustainable in the industry. Do you think your competitors feel the same way? Because we, all of these industries, it's like you're only as smart as your dumbest competitor. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot talk for them. But we think, of course, the promotionals uh, that has been out there now for a year is very high. I mean, that's why we have taken them down. We do much less of that. We come in and out in the market where we see... Uh, it's a good timing, and then we do a segmentation on it, right. seeing that which segments do we feel that really uh, uh, has a value proposition. So ultimately, it's about getting the right type of customers that is adding to our bottom line. I think that's also a work we're doing. We have been much better segmenting the market. Uh, we are all the way from the prepaid to our highest uh, 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 postpaid plans. Right. We're working a lot with that.